Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Intel Core i5-4430 Haswell CPU. This is at the time of this video the smallest Core i5 model of the fourth generation of Intel Core processors. Before I move on I'd like to thank Forticus, an amazing computer store and online shop for providing me this product. But here's the box with the new design now. Again, this is an Intel Core i5 processor. To be specific, the i5-4430, which uses the new LG1150 socket. Please don't try to install the CPU into the previous generation LG1155 socket. It simply will not work. On the side of the box are some highlights of the CPU. This i5-4430 features the new Intel HD Graphics 4600 integrated graphics. According to Intel, we should be able to see a major performance boost over the last generation of Intel HD Graphics and this time we see the exact same iGPU on the smallest Core i5 processor just like on the flagship model Core i7-4770K. This wasn't the case with last year's Ivy Bridge. We'll see how well the iGPU does a little bit later in the benchmarks. On the back as always is a description in different languages. And right here you can see the model name again along with some additional specifications such as the clock speed, amount of cache and socket. And up here you can see the processor itself inside the box, which we will now open to see what is included. Well I actually know what's included, but you get my point. As always, the Intel Core i5 processor installation instructions with a brand new sticker on the back. Of course there's also a stock cooler included. It's still the exact same one we've seen since the Intel Sandy Bridge CPUs. That's a very small heatsink actually. Thermal paste comes reapplied already. But now to the most important part, the CPU. It's inside this plastic case. I'll quickly take it out so we can take a closer look at it. Here it is now, the new Intel Core i5-4430 Haswell CPU. It looks pretty much the same as the previous generation Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge CPUs. The size actually is the same, but again, this new processor requires 5 less pins in the socket. So we come from LG1155 to LG1150. Now let's move on to the specifications. The Intel Core i5-4430 is a quad-core Haswell CPU with a base clock of 3.0 GHz and a turbo clock of 3.2 GHz. This processor now features new integrated graphics, the Intel HD Graphics 4600. The TDP increased by some watts, it's 84 watts now. The Ivy Bridge i5-3450 or 3330 had a 77 watt TDP, although this new Haswell processor is also manufactured at the 22 nanometer process. 1 megabyte of level 2 as well as 6 megabytes of level 3 cache is offered. This CPU supports dual channel DDR3 1600 memory natively, just like the Ivy Bridge CPUs did. In my case I'll test the CPU with the Gigabyte GA Z87X UD3H motherboard featuring the new Z87 chipset. But before I forget, I'd like to tell you that Haswell is a little bit different. Oh and the processor you're seeing here in this scene isn't the i5-4430, it's the i7-4770K. But I'm talking of all the Haswell CPUs right now. All Haswell CPUs have built-in VRMs. This means you will not be that dependent on your motherboard power delivery system. So there's no need to buy a board with a big amount of power phases unless you're planning to go for some really extreme overclocks. So in simple words, you can go for cheaper motherboards now in terms of the power delivery system. In CPU-C you can once again see the specs. The new Haswell CPUs also come with a new power saving feature, the C6-C7 power states. This allows the CPU to run at very low voltages on idle with a minimum of 0.05 amps instead of the 0.5 amps on Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge CPUs. However, because it's only 0.05 amps, lots of power supplies will not be able to support this new power saving feature without switching themselves off. 
But don't worry, most power supply manufacturers now label their models whether they support the new C67 power states or not. If your power supply does not support this new feature, you can simply disable it in the BIOS. Also, the Haswell processors now come with new instructions such as the AVX2 and FMA3 for example. And because of the new C67 power states, the CPU will be able to run at a much lower clock speed on idle than before. Instead of 1.6 GHz on the i5 3450 or 3330, this new i5 4430 is able to run at 0.8 GHz, so 800 MHz. That's pretty impressive. I know you can't see that here because I'm not idling, I'm screen recording right now. This is not the K-series processor, so it doesn't come with an unlocked multiplier, so overclocking will not be that easy. Also, you now, just like on AMD CPUs, also have a CPU-oriented bus speed to change if you want to, so you no longer need to rely on the risky BCLK clock. This means there still is a possibility to overclock, but not the so easy one. As you can see, I have DDR3 2133 MHz memory installed. Just like Ivy Bridge, the new Haswell CPUs in general have no problem with high frequency memory. Unfortunately, this i5-4430 isn't able to keep the DRAM frequency at a stable value and so the frequency can dip from time to time. It's really strange to see something like that. For instance, last year I also tested the i5-3450 IV Bridge CPU, which was the smallest CPU of the Core i5 series for quite a while and it also had problems with the DRAM frequency, but a different one. So if you have memory running higher than 1600 or 1866 MHz, I'd recommend going for the next higher model, the i5-4570. But then again, only if you really care about the DRAM frequency stability. Now in GPU-Z you can see the integrated graphics, the Intel HD Graphics 4600. The highlight is the DirectX 11.1 support. However, in my opinion, the iGPU doesn't make much sense on such a processor. But enough talking about the specifications and the features, let's move on to the benchmarks and see what this processor really can do and if there's an improvement over the last generation.
So there you have it. The Intel Core i5-4430 definitely is not a bad processor. However, there's a good and a bad side. This time Intel leaves us with some evil surprises. What can I say about the performance? Well, the performance is pretty good, but to be honest, I have pretty much no previous generation Ivy Bridge CPU to compare this CPU with. I've had the i5-3450, but it can't really be compared against it, because even now, the older i5-3450 costs a little bit more than this i5-4430. This i5-4430 should be compared against the i5-3330, but again, I never had the possibility to test the CPU. When comparing the overall performance of the cheaper i5-4430 with the older i5-3450 I had, the older CPU definitely offers more performance. Although the rendering performance isn't that good with this CPU, gaming works really well. Of course, you don't get as many FPS as you would with the i5-4670K or the i7-4770K, but for the price, when only judging the gaming performance, the new i5-4430 is pretty good. But still, when comparing this CPU with the bigger brother, the i5-4570, the i5-4430 really falls back behind in pretty much everything. The price difference, however, isn't that big. So all in all, the i5-4570 could be the better choice over the i5-4430. The integrated graphics performance got a lot better compared to the previous generation of integrated graphics, although the performance is far away for decent gaming. So the iGPU, in my opinion, pretty much is worthless on such a processor. It simply takes up space that could have been used for more transistors on the CPU die. What about the temperatures? Although this was expected already, the temperatures are higher. Last year a lot of reviewers and consumers complained about the high Ivy Bridge temperatures. This year however, with Haswell, you'd certainly wish to have the Ivy Bridge temperature results back. Luckily this i5-4430 doesn't heat up as much as the bigger Core i5 and i7 processors, but still it's quite high. I cooled the CPU down with my Corsair H100i water cooler and the temperature stood in the mid 50s with it, degrees Celsius of course. But what about the people that buy the CPU and don't have an aftermarket CPU cooler or don't want to spend extra money? Well with the included stock cooler the CPU will definitely get hot, but the cooler will still be able to keep the processor somewhat cool so it doesn't have to be throttled. But because the temperatures are higher, the CPU temperature sensor will give the signal to spin the fan at higher RPM values. This will lead to an overall louder computer system. But we're not done with just the temperatures alone. Unfortunately, the power consumption increased a lot as well compared to the previous generation processors. On idle, it pretty much is the same. But on full load, the power consumption of this i5-4430 for instance can be compared with the older i7-3770 k at stock. Yes, you heard right, the i7-3770 k. However, the older i7 offers roughly 50% more performance than this i5-4430. That's kinda sad for the consumer, but this makes AMD's FX CPUs stand in a better light now, since there's not so much difference anymore when it comes to the power consumption. So I list all the good things about this i5-4430 now. First off, it offers more performance than the previous generation of processors at this price point in games. Has a new power saving feature, the C6-C7 power states, which apparently don't help very much. Then the iGPU, the integrated graphics performance got a lot better. The CPU also comes with new instructions and a selectable bus speed. And because the Haswell CPUs have built-in VRMs, you can now save some money by not buying so expensive motherboards with a better power delivery system, so more phases. You don't rely on these that much anymore. Now the bad things. First off, the temperatures are higher, which means with the included stock cooler you'll end up with a fairly loud computer system. Then the power consumption, which increased a lot over the last generation. This definitely is a big step backwards. So now to answer the questions of the consumer. Is it worth it to upgrade your system from Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge to Haswell? 
The answer is no, unless you want that few extra frames in games. But you don't just need to buy the CPU alone, but also a new motherboard. And with this i5-4430, there isn't that much of a difference anyways. But who actually should upgrade to Haswell? Well, people with older platforms from years like 2010 or earlier. Power consumption wise, it still will be an upgrade from the older platform. So this time Intel didn't do it all perfectly and I'm honestly disappointed. I know there are lots of reviews out there that say that the temperatures and power consumption are lower, but this is not the case here. And because I'm not sponsored, but Fortecus, a computer store, gave me the processor to review, I'm reviewing the retail version of this chip. This is the real i5-4430 you get as the consumer, the retail version. Pros are good performance, more FPS in games over the previous generation processors, and high frequency memory is supported, but we'll also have to see the cons regarding the memory frequencies. Unfortunately, there are some heavy cons. First, the high temperatures. The power consumption increased over the previous generation processors. And last but not least, high memory frequencies are unstable from time to time. And because these are some really heavy cons, I can only give the CPU a 6 out of 10, but still, for the overall value, I would still recommend the i5-4430. Once again, thanks to Forticus for providing me this processor. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x5techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.